Nitro Circus Live is performing in Johannesburg, South Africa tonight, and it's setting up to be one of the biggest shows in Nitro history. We performed in front of huge crowds in France, Japan. Even our last show in Durban was huge. Tonight is shaping up to be 35,000 plus. When we decided to take the show to South Africa, it was a, a big unknown for us. We've never been there, and we've only heard anecdotally that we have an audience there. But here we sit, 35,000 tickets have been sold. I guess they know who we are. The country's been great to us, and tonight is our biggest show we've ever done, so. Um... out there, give her hell, and put on the best show we can, because there's there's a lot of people that are really stoked to see you guys. So I don't know, bring in for South Africa on three. Great. These shows have been awesome. I mean, tonight may have been our best show ever, so thank you guys very much. Yeah. The NBC guys, wheels, 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 wheels. To have that many people show up to the Johannesburg show was really humbling, but my highlight is when Wheels can stick his front flip in his wheelchair and just blow that many people's minds. We had the biggest show in the history of Nitro Circus in Johannesburg. Now the crew needs a little time off to explore and see the sights and sounds of Africa. We are in a little unknown corner of the world called Zululand, and we get to ride our bikes in a place that most people will never get to set foot on, and we get to spend the day out here in this beautiful country exploring. Zululand was like going inside the pages of a National Geographic. Extremely unique, interesting, and overwhelmingly full of culture. Donald, thank you so much for having us. Zululand just seems like such a such a cool place, such a place where that's basically fallen off the map to most people around the world, but it's just beautiful here. Yeah, most of these kids here haven't even seen white people, so to see a bunch of people cruising around in motorcycles that a lot of kids haven't seen is really a treat, and we're right on the border of one of the biggest national parks in South Africa. Shall we? Right on. Most of the motorcycles in Zululand are delivery bikes. Little 200cc moped looking things with boxes on the back. So to see a high performance motorcycle in their neighborhood is not a regular occurrence. Riding dirt bikes in Africa is a lot of fun because of what you can see and the views you get to. 
scary part are the moving speed bumps. Sheep, goats, and cows. One of the best parts of traveling the world is interacting with different cultures. Taking these local kids for rides on our dirt bikes was a once in a lifetime experience. You want to ride? Oh, that was, that was intense. That Unbelievable. Was so, that was something else. Right? And the reason this area is so beautiful is we're just up against the national park. So these people effectively live in lion elephant territory. The Umfalozi National Reserve over there is famous for two things. It brought the rhino back from extinction. Unfortunately, now there's a massive amount of poaching going on. So what I'm trying to arrange is that we go out with one of these anti-poaching units that go and look for the bad guys that are killing these animals. But you can understand the attraction of poaching. A lot of these people live under, with less than a dollar a day, and a rhino horn is worth $100,000. Mm. It's estimated if we don't change our behavior like right now, these rhinos could go extinct within the next five years. If we get the chance to join the anti-poaching unit, we'll be out there looking for snares, traps, and helping them. See, yeah, and part of it is education, too. If there wasn't a demand, there wouldn't be a supply. So the more people know that rhino horn is a bad thing, the less demand there'll be. So not only looking for snares and fighting poachers, but getting the message out there. So it'll be a great way for us to make a, make a difference. Make a massive difference. Yeah. We are here at the Lion Rehabilitation Center. So if the lion wakes up, it's literally every person for himself. One of the most important things about conservation is captive propagation or breeding. So we went to a facility that specializes in breeding lions and tigers. I thought it would be fun to let them touch some basically kittens and puppies. Oh, he's got my pants! So the next thing we get to do, and I am so excited about it, is we get to go play with some young lions and tigers. These lion and tiger cubs are the coolest things ever. They just won't leave me alone. It's like cuteness overload. Hey. Good animals. This place is like a giant lion daycare. It's pretty awesome. This play date with the young lions and the nitro crew is going really well, but what these young lions are actually doing is honing their hunting skills. We all seem to get caught up in how cute they were and kind of forgot these lions and tigers are wild animals, and they let us know. These guys get mauled. Just ripped my shirt. Watch out, they're, gonna they're going for it again. Yeah, hey, hey, God. hey. It may seem like fun and games, and as the Nitro crew is playing with these animals, you start realizing exactly how powerful these are and the fact that they're all wild animals at any time it could turn. No. Tonto, we need assistance. I feel like the cat's kind of started teetering from treating us as playthings to dinner. The crew's having a hard time. These critters are all over their gear. I think a couple wires, a camera, and some humans were chewed up in the making of this segment. I'm not sure if this is how it works, dude. Yeah, we're surrounded by predators, man. One of the things about big cats, when it starts getting dark, they start becoming more wild, and the crew saw firsthand exactly how scary this can be. <laughs> kind of gave me a little scrape to the eye. Got to watch them. They like to play with you a little bit, and then as soon as they get aggravated, they get a little aggressive. Ah! It's fighting. The casualty of war. Hello. Do you want a belly rub, maybe? No. Tigers, are you not supposed to give? Hey, no. No. When Jolene gets around critters, her mama bear instinct totally kicks in. She's scolding the lion and tiger cubs like they're nine-month-old little puppies. Jolene, these are wild animals. It's feeding time. <laughs> it's, yo, it's feeding time for the lions. I think it's best we all get out of here. So the tiger's got The tiger is not my favorite. He's aggressive. He's sneaky. He's a tiger. We've overstayed our welcome. We were in their cage having fun, petting them. 
but now they're getting a little aggressive. You can get into the lion pit, but you can't get out. They're lions and tigers. It's time for us to leave. These little cubs are super fun, super cute, but still pretty aggressive. I think I was the only one that made it out without any bites or scratches. It's amazing to be able to share this part of Africa with people and having the Nitro crew in a cage with young cats is an absolutely amazing experience. But these are just babies. The big ones are a lot bigger, a lot smarter, and definitely a lot scarier. Motorsports legend, to put it mildly. Three, two, here we are. Some might call our next guest just plain nuts because he lives and breathes extreme motocross sports. Here's what you need to know, Travis Pastrana's Nitro Circus. Good morning, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us on Good Day Orlando. It's, by the way. While the rest of the crew is in South Africa enjoying some well-deserved off time, I'm here in the States doing a press tour for Nitro Circus Live in the U.S. So excited, May 5th, Nitro Circus Live coming here to Amelie Arena. The Nitro Circus Live is coming to the Veterans Memorial Arena this Friday night. Basically, a press tour involves junkets, interviews, appearances, anything and everything that I can do to spread the word that Nitro's coming to town. Travis, explain to people what the Nitro Circus is. PR is a huge part of growing the Nitro Circus brand, and I'm not gonna lie. Interviews, appearances, working on no sleep, red-eye flights all over the world, it's tough, but it gives me a chance to reach a new audience and hopefully some new Nitro fans, and it's worth it. After playing with the baby lions and tigers, it was time for Donald to put us back to work. Now that the play date is over, our goal is to go over and to work with an adult lion that's been injured before, and we can address his wounds and see exactly what's going on. We are here at a lion rehabilitation center in South Africa. We're here to check on a lion that sustained some injuries. They're saying it's a two-week checkup, and uh, some of the injuries were significant enough that they had to throw some sutures in there, antibiotics, so hopefully he's doing well. I think the female lions were actually beating up on him a little bit. And if he's in good enough shape, we can release him to the wilds. That's right. Since the lion is likely being tranquilized before for treatment, it was a bit stressed about being darted again. As a defense mechanism, it climbed the tree trying to evade the dart gun. Lions climb the tree. Lions. Perfect. Okay, so shh, 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 let's just sit down here. I don't think it hurt. That was a distress call, so now all the other lions are calling. Feel that, feel it in your chest. Like they can travel for five miles. The sound of a lion's roar is like hearing a jet engine for the first time. It is so powerful. Once you dart a lion, it takes a few minutes for the drugs to kick in. And during this time, they'll often send out distress calls. And what this does is gets all the other lions in the area riled up and ready for action. It's a distress call. It's his friends next the store. They're wondering what's happening. It was horrifying. Once one lion started roaring, they all started roaring. I thought they were coming through the cages. So basically what's going to happen is he's going to get sleepy. The only problem is with these drugs, hypersensitivity to sound. So we have to be very, very quiet to the point that if we stimulate him too much, he can wake up. So that's obviously not a good thing for us. Yeah, so they tranquilize the lion with some powerful drugs, but it can still wake up to sudden loud noises. OK, he's getting woozy. Oh, oh. Oh. That is one just from the tree. Perfect. Perfect, 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 perfect. Shh, 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 shh. What happened is when they, even when they anesthetize, their hooks work. So yeah. it's hanging from the tree, and even though it's getting sleepy, it sort of decelerates on the way down, which is exactly what we wanted. He's fast asleep. This is a drug that they can't overpower. So if the lion wakes up, it's literally every person for himself. Today we're getting to go on a pretty amazing mission. This is probably the most dangerous thing you guys are doing this trip. Okay. Working with sedated lions is scary as they can wake up at any time. So one of the most important things is to have an exit strategy on how to get out of Dodge in case this cat wakes up. This is the only gate out. And like, that's not a joke. And like, basically get over here, get over here as quickly as possible. And it's gonna be super quiet. Yeah, the big lions, they're not as cute and cuddly as the little ones. Guys, we need to keep it down. He's very, very light. 
The lion was asleep, but it became obvious that it could wake up at any minute. We were already in the cage, so now we have to be extremely quiet and no sudden movements. And I don't want to get my fingers closer because I can still close their jaws. Just look at that. That will go through a world of BCM. Yeah, I mean, look, compared to your finger. This is where the wounds are. We're checking on this area right here. The problem with any wound on the back line is that there's no drainage. Gravity can't do its bit. So you get this pocket of pus forming and there's nothing to clean it. One of the big problems with cat bites especially is the body heals quicker than bacteria. So basically you have the wounds exactly. The wounds closing shut and there's bacteria trapped inside and that's what we have here. So he's opening up those drainage holes. Bad news for this guy is he won't be able to go back into the wild. Good news is he's not going to die. Oh, wow. It was horrifying. They take a stick and put a rag on it and jam it down in this big wound on the lion's back. The sooner we get this done, the better for me. I'm just saying. That's not going to wake it up. I'm scared. So the cat's down, we're doing the treatments, we're looking at the wound, but Crumb's pretty much losing it. I think he finally realizes how serious Africa is and how serious these animals can be nice antiseptic spray that will keep. And unfortunately, in this area, there's a big problem with flies. So one of the things that you're worried about, flies laying eggs, you get maggot infection. Is this the final yeah. shot? No, no, the wake-up shot will give him, yeah, we'll, we'll give him the last. How many shots do we have left? The final shot. The final one, I believe. So we're going to give him this shot. It's going to go into his muscles, work its way into the bloodstream, he's going to wake up. Yeah. And we're on the other side of the fence. Yes. OK. Putting the final shot in right now, and we're all gonna get on the other side of the fence. The final shot's in. Cool. I mean, the good news for him is the wounds are healing. The bad news for him is they aren't healed enough to be released yet. But ultimately, he'll be back in the wild soon. He's on the road to recovery. Absolutely. This is probably as bad as it's gonna get. Good things take time. Yeah. Lions are really resilient, and this injury looks like it will heal if these treatments work. And hopefully, these females won't hurt him anymore. Speaking of time, let's give him some. Tonight, I get to cap off the press tour with one of my favorite activities. Hosting an event at K1 Speed here in Southern California. The beauty of this is all the Nitro fans get to come out and we get to race go-karts. You think you can beat me? Bring it on. Man, I hope Bilko shows up. Trap's there, yapping to everyone, doing interviews, trying to sell tickets, doing the PR thing. I'm there for one reason, one reason only, to race. No pressure, $100 online between us two. K1 speed, me versus Trav, the battle continues. Feeling confident. I've looked at the screen. I've got the best time. The money's mine. Next thing you know, Trav comes out last lap, beats me time by the smallest of margin. Sucks for you. I'm gonna say I was pretty surprised slash devastated. He got the win, took my money, but it's an investment. I will win that money back within the next month. Yeah, uh, whatever, whatever you get a chance, man. You know, just, just think about is it. Is there an ATM here? Probably. <laughs> Today we're getting to go on a pretty amazing mission, and that's rhino conservation. Uh, it's estimated that rhinos could be extinct in the next five years if something drastic isn't done. Our goal is to go out, dart a rhino, get DNA for the Rhino DNA database to combat poaching and put a tracker on it so conservationists can see its movements. 
The big risk is this is a giant animal. We're in the bush in Africa, the deadly snakes, and there's seven other rhinos in the area too. In this area, in the last month, four rhinos have been poached. So most of these people can't afford to get these telemetry collars. So what Nitro Circus is doing is getting the logistics in there. We're able to help with the procedure and hopefully we get out alive. That's wonderful. We are so excited to be here to be able to help this rhino today. And we're going to call it our Nitro Rhino. For rhinos being such massive animals, they're not easy to find. When darting rhinos, you need a helicopter. The savanna is really dense and it's hard to see animals, even things as big as rhinoceros. So we have our vehicles on the ground to do the darting and then the chopper in the air for eyes in the sky to tell us exactly where the animals are. The veterinarian taking us on this ride is amazing. He's been doing this for years. He says it's a losing battle because there are so many poachers and they are completely ruthless. I just really want to emphasize on how extraordinary this expedition is. Uh, there's a small knit community that go out and do these types of things and they don't just let outsiders in. So the fact that we're here and getting to interact with this animal and getting to help you tag it is, is pretty extraordinary. Well, you must remember it's a high risk operation. I mean, you got wild animals, you got deadly drugs, you got other animals, so it's really, really risky. But you must remember this is essential to the animal survival. This isn't for fun, this isn't a, a, a just to do it. This is essential in the conservation of the rhinos. But you're right, very few people have actually seen rhinos up close. Even fewer people have been on foot with live rhinos. It's intense. Even, I mean, even the safety briefing this morning, I, I got a little worried. I mean, the, the talk about the drugs that are gonna be injected in these animals, how potent they are to a human, that's crazy. So we really had to listen to what we were told and just kind of pay attention. This is probably the most dangerous thing you guys are doing this, this trip. Yeah, I agree. This is definitely the most dangerous, probably the most dangerous thing Nitro Circus has ever done. It's getting, getting a little bit more right intense. Now. And then we're, we're going to start speaking with inside voices nice and quiet. Rhinos have terrible eyesight, but they have amazing smell and hearing. So one of the things I need to impress on the Nitro crew was the fact that this is a very, very difficult situation. and Everyone needs to be super quiet and super stealth. Rhinos, 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 right there. There's a group of three. The, the chopper's moving out just to, just to stop spooking them. There's a big one, I think, a big one in the front. Rhinos are creatures of habits, and they're used to seeing vehicles with tourists on safaris in it. Uh, we were not in one of those, and that spooked them, so we had to switch vehicles at the last minute and get into something that they might find more familiar. Finding a rhino is not an easy task, so when we finally tracked one down, we jumped straight into action so we can get our Nitro Circus tracking collar on it. James, shoot those rhinos. Once we darted her, we only had a short period of time to get the assessment and the collar on. And now what we do is wait for between four and eight minutes as the drugs take effect. The chopper's in the sky to make sure that nothing else is sneaking up on us, like lions and elephants, and to tell us exactly what's going on. If the rhino passes out and remains on its side for too long, it could possibly die. We need to act quickly. One of the concerns is if the rhino's laying on its side, won't be able to breathe and actually die. Growing up as a kid, you always hear about dinosaurs, and seeing a rhino in the flesh for the first time is pretty much as close as you can get to a dinosaur. The drugs that we use to dart rhinos are extremely powerful sedative. And one of the concerns is if the rhino's laying on its side, won't be able to breathe and actually die. So thankfully, the nitro crew were there because we were able to push the rhino from its side, basically to sternal, which is sitting up position, so we could do the work we needed. Simon? Wow. Simon? This is real wow, we just... and intense. Wow, I could not believe the amount of people it took for us to lift the rhino back onto his feet. How big would you say this is? 1.2 tons, so it's 1,200 kilograms, so it's almost 3,000 pounds. So we're getting the assessment done, trying to make sure she stays nice and cool. We want to get this Nitro Circus tracking collar on her. Feel, put your hand there, feel how hot that is. Yeah, I mean, it's really, really cooking, so what we have to do is move quickly. Who has water? There's Mine's water in that other one. 
So we're just taking a little wedge of skin over here. And this is for DNA sequencing. So they get a DNA database. So when they find horns, they can match them to where the rhinos are killed. So basically, they have a horn that's found in Laos or Vietnam. They can tell exactly where in South Africa to the specific reserve where that rhino horn came from. So it helps with prosecution, helps with court cases, helps with conservation. So that's imperative. That's exactly what everyone's doing right now. With, it's actually law that when you dart rhino, you have to take DNA. So the good thing with the drugs that we use is we can give a reverse so the rhino will be up and on its feet within minutes, reunite with its calves, and it'll basically just be like a bad day in the office. Okay. A, a lot of these drugs have amnesiac qualities, so they actually won't remember what happens. Yeah, so hopefully this is just like a blurry dream or a drunken night and doesn't turn out to be a traumatic experience. I mean, the way we did it was absolutely textbook, absolutely perfect, couldn't have gone better. It's a full-on anesthetic drug, so if it was lying on the side, they, they lose the ability to control their temperature, laying on the side would probably drown in its own lungs and die. So it's a, not a good situation. One of the most important things for conservation is knowing where these endangered animals are. And an important part of that is radio telemetry. Nitro Circus Live bought a collar for this rhinoceros so conservationists can track its movements. This is an enormous animal. Never done anything like this. I'm pretty much speechless right now. Okay, here we go. And it's on. I, uh, I got to tighten the bolts up on her uh, ankle bracelet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is, this is amazing. I'm so focused on just helping her and making sure she's OK and that she's not getting hurt. So one, one good step forward. We got the, we got the collar on. It's the big critical problem with the rhino right now is the horn. I mean, that's what they're killing this entire animal for. If you look at this, is basically compressed hair. They kill this giant, beautiful animal, chop the horn off, and leave everything that else. Look anything like I thought it would. And, and it's, I mean, it's just, there's nothing to it. Like, it it's, yeah. it's thought to be an aphrodisiac, but the real reason now is it's a status symbol. People have it to say, I have rhino, and a lot of people are banking on rhinos going extinct so that they'll have a piece of an extinct animal, which is just terrible. The rhino is such a majestic animal. And the fact that these creatures are being hunted and poached to near extinction, it's heartbreaking. I think we have everything we need from this beautiful creature. I think the last thing Thanks, we have to do sweetheart. now is reverse it. You did amazing. Once you reverse it, how quickly will she wake up? Very quickly. I mean, I've seen it take anything from 30 seconds to five minutes. So the, what we want to do is reverse it, get in our vehicles, watch from a distance. Hopefully, she pops up and runs away. And that's why we left the cats in. We have venous access, we can put the drugs directly in there. <laughs> and hopefully they'll push those drugs with the receptor sites and we'll be up in minutes. Unbelievable. Right now we're gonna activate the collar. I'm gonna pull this magnet off and it will start beeping. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna give the reversal, there it is right there, and what's gonna happen is this animal's gonna pop up and we need to treat it like it's a live loaded weapon, like it's a live rhino. So everyone that's not essential, let's start moving back, let's get on vehicles and let's watch from there. Shh. Little sluggish. What an amazing creature. Although our nitro rhino was a bit groggy and dazed from the tranquilizer, she finally managed to shake it off and find her way back to her calves. Now we know exactly where she is, when she's there, how long she's there for, to be able to monitor not only her but her calves as well. All because well, of nitro I'd like to officially label her as maybe the second nitro girl. <laughs> that was so intense. I can't so believe we just did that. Amazing. Thank, thank you, you, Donald. I can't thank you. Thank you. Hello, man. <laughs> Welcome to South Africa. <laughs> Holy cow. That just happened. All the rhinos in South Africa are extremely endangered, so the fact that Nitro Circus was able to get a collar on one and watch over her, I'm very proud of this. Donald really wanted us to be a part of this anti-poaching mission. You see that? It sucks being hurt and not being in South Africa with the whole crew. Trav is actually kind of in the same position right now, and he's off doing PR, so I'm going to go meet up with him. I have a couple ideas for the live show that I want to get his opinion on, so we're going to go see what he has to say. Hey, hey Dusty. Dude, thanks a lot for coming here. out. Uh, yeah, yeah good to be here. How's that wing, man? That's a little sore, but uh, I just wanted to run something by you real quick. So I want to <laughs> oh, put boy. pit bikes in the show. Every member of the Nitro Circus comes with a unique talent or specialty. Dusty Weigel is no exception to that. He comes from the pit bike world, which is a world where grown-up dudes ride really small motorcycles but still do gigantic tricks on them. I haven't ridden them in a long time, so add something new to the show. I'm gonna put a pit bike in. 
Uh, it's been frowned upon like we, we tried that, but... Uh, no, 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 let, let me rephrase that. <laughs> I'm bringing my pit bike to the next show, and I'm gonna huck some stuff, and we're gonna see how it goes. I don't think Dusty has ever asked anyone for permission to do anything. He just shows up and does it, and that's the passion that we're looking for on Nitro. You can't have too many Dusties. You should probably tell Mike. No, just... no, 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 no. No, we're just gonna do it. I, well, I'm gonna do it. You're gonna do, say whatever you need to say, but don't say it. And then he's gonna like it, and it's gonna go on the show. I really like the pit bikes. It's super technical, it's very difficult. He's passionate about it, we'll give him a shot. Bring that passion, bring that energy. <laughs> Love you, man. <laughs> Better to ask forgiveness than permission. One of the biggest threats for African wildlife is poaching. And after placing that tracker on the rhino, I thought it was very important for the Nitro crew to experience exactly what the poaching situation is like. So for us, for Bobby and I, this is kind of sketchy because we tried to get insurance for this and they said, no way. All we ask is everyone listen to the guides, everyone stay in close, be safe. That's the most important thing. On all the shoots we've ever done for Nitro, we've always secured insurance that, that covers everything. But for this, we couldn't. And we had to you know, relay that message to the cast that you know, if you wanted to come participate, this was going to be purely voluntary. So we are in northern Zululand. This is an area that's a really a hotbed for anti-poaching. And I've done a bunch of anti-poaching work with these guys. And Tommy's actually been really active in anti-poaching too. And we thought we'd give you guys some background on not only rhinoceros poaching, but some of the other stuff that goes on in the area. The thing with rhinos is basically the loss of rhinos has been exponential for the last four or five years. And at the current rate, they'll go extinct in the next five years unless something dramatic's done. A rhino horn on the black market can carry a value of 60 to 70,000 US dollars per kilogram. We now have got less than 20,000 left in South Africa. Rhino, black and white. The problem that I see is people don't want rhinos anymore because they're more work than they're worth. So anyone that has rhinos on their property, you have to have full-time guards. Police don't protect them. You have to get private security firms in that do the job of policing these animals unless they are national parks. But in the national parks, they're getting hit even harder. Poachers beware. Nitro Circus is on the job. Unless something dramatic is done quickly, we are seeing a massive extinction event in our lifetime. Donald really wanted us to be a part of this anti-poaching mission. One of the first things we went out looking for were snares. The thing with snares is they have to be checked every day because if an animal gets hit by one, and you're not there and it dies, it's gonna rot and the meat and everything else is useless. So right. essentially poachers have to come back and check their snares every day. When I started riding BMX at 12 years old with the boys on the streets of Taupo, I really did not think it was gonna take me here to South Africa to find snares and go on an anti-poaching mission. Finding poachers is rare. Right. It takes a lot of skill and effort. Um, one of the things with these guys, unfortunately, poachers, it's a shoot to kill policy. If there's a trespasser on your land. Like, if we see a guy now, we're allowed to kill him. By South African law, we can shoot and kill him. Poachers know that, so usually what they do, try and be invisible, but if they are discovered, they'll start shooting first. Oh, so wow. most of the contact you get with guys here um, is seeing snares, is seeing footprints. It's basically chasing a ghost. It's so crazy how they hide them right out in plain sight, and they are actually really difficult to find. Right there. You guys walk, walk literally right past the check. Oh, yeah. You see that? Yeah. That's, that's literally what we're looking for. Look how crude it is. So simple. It doesn't have to so be complicated. Simple. So animal goes in, no matter what size it is, that tweaks up around its neck. Animal's stuck to the tree. Animal freaks out. If the poacher's nearby, hears the sound of the animal freaking out, comes over, kills it. Best case scenario, animal hangs to death, either asphyxiation or blood loss from jugular veins. Worst case scenario, the animal's really strong, pulls this off, runs away, and then has a snare stuck around its neck. But that's probably one of the biggest killers of animals in Africa. It's sad and inhumane that a lot of these poachers are using snares to catch these animals. It was this big when we found it, so, I mean, that'll fit around many different kinds of animals' necks. Walking around in the wild near our camp, it's incredible to see how these snares are pretty much everywhere and some of them in plain sight. It's just like, see, see, take, take your light, take, take your lights off it real quick. Take it, check it out, it's gone. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're looking for. Our professional here found us a snare. 
We're about to wrap it up for the night and get back to camp. And just on the walk back, he happened to catch a glimpse of a larger one actually than the one we just, uh, just caught. I'm really glad that we were able to find a couple of these snares and do our part. It's so sad and they're so dangerous. That actually turned out to be a greater success than we thought. I mean, walking back to camp, we found another one. Should we head back and give the other crew a shot at yeah. finding snares? Donald is taking us out on a night mission. Down, 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 down. All right, dropping. Dustin really wants to do some pit bike riding in the show, and that's where he started. It's where a lot of Nitro guys started. So I kind of personally take credit for Dusty because the Nitro Circus was at an event in Las Vegas. I went out and kind of asked for a few volunteers to, to show up and join in the fun with us. Dusty showed up in a Speedo and necktie and basically said, what do you need me to do? Dusty ended up whipping around this motocross track on his pit bike and concluded his act by backflipping this thing into the abyss, not having any sort of chance of landing it. At that moment, I was like, a star is born. Dusty is a jack of all trades. He starts out, launches off the top of the Dirty Ramp all the way to the bottom in opening ceremonies, switches up to Scuba Steve, and he's on this boogie board doing these amazing tricks. This guy does everything, and he does everything with charisma. I don't see him ever being the best at anything because he doesn't have the attention span for that. But there's not one thing on Nitro that he can't do really, really well. I figure I'd rather overshoot it. Than overshoot it, dude. Hit it third. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. We started putting Dusty into all these other stunts that involved contraptions outside of pit bikes. And at one point, the pit bike just kind of wasn't there anymore. And so our new Moto Mayhem show gives us the opportunity to get Dusty back to where he belongs. On a little kid's motorcycle. Donald is taking us out on a night mission. One crew has already set out to one side of the park. We're going to cover the other. We got intelligence that there were poachers on the reserve, and a few rhinos had been killed in the area recently. So we were really concerned because poachers don't use flashlights. They use the light of the moon. And here's a big group of us running around with our flashlights on. So doing this at night becomes a lot more dangerous. First of all, we have to be very quiet. Second of all, you have to try to keep as much of the noise a minimum as possible, which is very difficult. And you have leopards. They're definitely on the prowl. We have to be aware of that. And the poachers. Walking around in the pitch black in Africa looking for poacher snares gave me an uneasy feeling. Poachers are now out and about, going to be checking their snares, checking to see if they've caught anything from the day. Snares become much more difficult to see. You only have a small headlamp to kind of scour through. So we're uh, trying to cover more ground. It's just a lot more difficult. We're looking for snares, and uh, they're very difficult to find. It's hard to see. And yeah, there's a lot of creepy noises. You didn't know if you were going to be bit by a strange animal, attacked by a poacher, or fall into someone's trap. Hey, can we those more? Switch your lights off. Don't, no one's Switch your lights off. Lights up, lights up, lights up. Get down. Switch your lights off. This is no longer an anti-poaching mission. This is a get out of Dodge Alive mission. Camouflage does not. Down, 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 down. Switch your lights off. Don't, no one's Switch your lights off. Lights up, lights up, lights up. Get down. When we were out anti-poaching, we got shot at. It's not a situation you want to put yourself in. Hang tight, hang tight, hang tight. Throw up hands on, throw up hands on. As soon as we hear the gunshots, we hit the ground. So crazy, as we were laying down, all we could hear were more gunshots, and nobody knew what was going on. All right, it's just not moving on. 
Do we run? No, 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 do not don't run. run. Don't just, run. just walk. Walk, walk, and walk, keep her. Once we're on the ground and the gunfire stopped, now our next concern is getting everyone out safely. This is no longer an anti-poaching mission, this is a get out of Dodge Alive mission. I'm actually blown away that it all came together. I convinced everyone to come ride with me. I convinced Trav. It's going in the show, and I'm pretty pumped to see how it goes. I'm kind of coming full circle. I haven't ridden pit bikes in a long time, so pretty pumped to just go out there and have some fun and throw some tricks and see how the crowd reacts to it. We weren't sure how Dusty and the pit bike would uh, be received in the shows, but once we saw the reaction to it and the crowd was loving it, looks like he found his way back to his first love. Little dirt bikes for kids. After hearing a series of gunshots, everybody was a bit frazzled. But we slowly but surely managed to make our way back to camp safely. Poachers shooting guns. <clears throat> he wasn't very far when he shot his first time. Well, we, we were walking basically away from camp, and we got probably about six, seven hundred yards away, and um, we just heard gunfire, like a short burst of gunfire. And we all hit the deck, and immediately afterwards we heard return fire, and we just tried to hustle out of there as quickly as possible. And we probably got two minutes away, and we heard more gunfire way over there. So it might have been a, a running gun battle, but either way, this is no place to be. We were this close to being caught in the middle of a gunfight. Whether it was poaching or something entirely different, we're not sure. It shook everyone to the core, and our night is quickly coming to an end. I think. TV show less important, getting out of here more important. So with everything that's happened, the final decision is to just get the heck out of here, so peace out. South Africa was a huge success, and I can't thank Donald Schultz enough for one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had, hands down. And the fact that Nitro Circus had such a huge helping hand on this trip made me feel really good. Big thanks to Donald Schultz for taking the Nitro Circus crew under his wing and really showing us how we can help and, and just for being such an advocate for conservation.